these albums is song for song they're great but the way the album flows i think that's such a lost art when and when i hear it now it stands out so well, much i why have to do mention you, it why do you think it's a lost art because people just release singles now yeah 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 i i i understand but when yeah. i do hear it when i do hear a record released where the track listing makes sense i'll say that about that buck cherry record too um when you put it on and it flows just seamlessly from start to finish and gives you something with each song uh i think that's a lost art it used to be pretty common back in the day when bands because like you said they approached it differently they said hey we need to make this this almost has to be a story not that it's a concept album but it has to have a cadence and a flow oh yeah it's you know it's got to have a start and a finish you know what you, you know what it. sort of modern record has that that's it's not it's not new by any means but it's also not as old as this these ufo records we speak of right now <laughs> is allison chain's dirt the flow yeah. of that record yes is a yeah. journey yeah they nailed it it's like dark side of the moon they just nailed yes. the flow almost like a concept record yes that's a good one funny yeah. that right yeah yeah i mean it's so rare that when you hear it now it strikes you and it, it used to just be commonplace but now when i hear it it's an attribute that i'm not used to talking about with an album because albums either have so much filler on them these days or I don't, i'm not interested in the album because the single didn't grab me right away there's something about not there's there's almost an incentive not to buy the whole album anymore i don't know what it is because i'm sort of from the old school but i don't hear people talk about albums anymore except for the hardcore you know nerds like us that have to have everything that motorhead ever releases or whatever right well it's not for everyone because they they don't have a place to store the format or they don't have the patience for the the room and the time that it takes and the ritual of, of I think that it's a bonus that you have a dash to, you know, for, to like help feed your bad habit. Yeah. It, it, there's no way I would spend as much time in the record store as I do without, without him wanting to go all the time. And I'm so grateful that he does because I find something you know, I spent plenty of time in the record stores when I was a kid. And even as a young adult, you just look around this room. Um, but I, it's not a top priority for me anymore. Right. Um, I me, cling me to the neither. Me I've neither. But if I have some time to kill, I'm going in there. Yeah. And I get, I, I end up there, like I said, once a week anyway. So I might as well start digging through that Ted Nugent rack, you know, or the Finn Lizzy section or whatever. I'm going to find some 70s gem that I never picked up the first time or the first copy is so scratched that I'm going to replace it for eight bucks and call that a win. So anyway, I am currently on a UFO kick and, and it kind of occurred to me that, uh, they've probably done as much quality work without michael schenker as they did with him or very close if 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 not as much um and i think that's a huge accomplishment oh yeah um i want to say this and not to top it off by any means uh but to correlate somehow because of the schenker brothers but scorpions it's kind of like the way that, and Michael's related, obviously, in, in the way that I'm about to also say that there's the Uli John Roth era of Scorpions, and then there's this whole other thing that they did without Uli John that's, some of it's just as fucking good yeah. without Uli yeah. John Roth, because there's yeah. this hardcore Uli John Roth, yeah, you know, in a, and who did Uli replace? Michael Schenker. Yeah, which is that's the irony. That's the funny. No, that's that's weird, a great that's a great analogy. Weird rub the, there. Scorpions did a good catalog of work post I, John Roth as well. I think Uli was only in the band for what five records. Yeah, five it, years. It then they did the live fun. album, and and then he split, and then they kept going, and oh my god, you know what they pulled off? Even the the next three, four, five records. 
It was yeah. animal magnetism and lo- well, it was love drive, animal magnetism, blackout. Those three records right there, I could survive. Yeah, they're great records. I mean, I love everything, you know, Flight of the Rainbow and Sure. In yeah. Trance and and Taken by Force and and of course Tokyo Tapes live record, which is just as hot and killer and running order and in every aspect as Strangers in the Night. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so here's another thing that occurred to me listening to some of this UFO stuff, you know, Scorpions always get the vote for like the the best quote unquote the 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 band that does the best quote unquote metal ballads that almost sounds mm. like an oxymoron, but mm. the metal band that does great ballads and people always name Scorpions and I get it. I understand why well, UFOs but, right there UFO, with them. UFO does amazing ballads, man. I mean, just killer stuff. Everybody knows love to love, but I mean, there's yeah, so but looking stuff. out for number one from obsession. It's a home yeah. run. There's a song called Terry on the mechanics record. That's just, Oh God, it just makes you cry, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And there's something, uh, I forget the title on this one from the wild, the willing and the innocent. Uh, 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 Hold on. Cause it's, it's, uh, uh, lonely heart, lonely heart is, is an amazing ballad. So anyway, Um, you know, some, some Michael Schenker snob is going to leave a bunch of comments telling me I'm out of my mind, but but that's good. We want that healthy interaction. And, uh, if you're a UFO or or a Scorpions nerd, because obviously we've kind of put in a Schenker soup order here, people can, people can (laughs) tell us all about it. Right. And don't get me wrong. I, I got a huge amount of respect from Michael Schenker. It just oh, yeah. it was one of those things that I never thought about until I started collecting some of these post Schenker UFO records and realizing, man, these are great albums. How did they do quality work without Michael Schenker? Well, you still had Phil Mogg and you still had Pete Way and, you know, and the songwriting is there. And and then with uh, Paul Chapman, you brought in a more than capable guitar I, player. So. I think that there is, uh, you know, the... The synergy, you know, is there between not just, you know, Phil. It wasn't just Phil Mogg and Michael Schenker that were writing those songs. You know what I mean? It makes you think about, well, who was who was really putting pen to paper and who had the guitar strapped on it when they were in the garage? You know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of a lot of great stuff from an era of a band that I think is often overlooked and uh if you're a huge fan of the classic UFO with Schenker and sort of never paid attention to the back end of the catalog, uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So. Yeah. And they, and they have been, I think that if you, once you go deep, I'm glad that you kind of mentioned that in some of our discussion before we hit record today, uh, because it, it, it's been great to just hear the, hear you pick, just mention even the album titles and hold them up and, and uh, put some fanfare on it because uh, I always look at UFO as, as, and also Thin Lizzy as one of these sort of uh, um, outer region and even have some, some ties into the new wave of British heavy metal. Yeah. In every way. Definitely. Uh, whether they were included in that or not, you know, but UFO Definitely. is just as important as Saxon is. Oh, yeah. And you ask any of those bands, Def Leppard, Iron Maiden, they all talk about UFO and Thin Lizzy. So uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't even have a, 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 a footstool if it wasn't for UFO. Yeah. And by the way, you said hit record. I hope you did that a long time ago. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, you you worry about having cool hair. I'll worry about hit record. <laughs> 